Greetings, curious minds, this is your friend Frank welcoming you to another captivating episode of The Clockwork Eye, your beacon of enlightenment in the vast ocean of philosophy, psychology, and sociology. As we continue our mission to illuminate the labyrinth of the mind, one insight at a time, today we embark on a fascinating exploration of the Fisherian runaway in human communication and societal behavior. This evolutionary phenomenon, first proposed by biologist Ronald Fisher in the early 20th century, offers a compelling explanation for the emergence of exaggerated traits and behaviors in the animal kingdom. But what can this concept tell us about the evolution of human communication and the rise of our hyperconnected modern world? Join us as we unravel the complexities of this intriguing idea and discover how it sheds light on the past, present, and future of human interaction. At its core, the Fisherian runaway is a process of self-reinforcing sexual selection, in which a particular trait or behavior becomes increasingly exaggerated over generations due to a positive feedback loop between mate preference and trait expression. As the renowned evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins explains in his seminal work, The Selfish Gene, the evolution of the peacock's tail is a case of runaway selection. The tail evolved because of the preference in the minds of peahens, and the only reason why the peahens prefer males with long tails is that their mothers and grandmothers also preferred long-tailed males. This idea of runaway selection has been invoked to explain a wide range of extravagant features in the natural world, from the elaborate plumage of birds of paradise to the massive antlers of Irish elk. But what relevance does this concept have for understanding the evolution of human communication and social behavior? As the authors of the compelling article, Runaway Processes in Modern Human Culture, argue, the exaggerated communication we observe in modern humans can be seen as the expression of a biological feature that has been liberated from environmental control. They suggest that the social evolution of our species, characterized by increasing group sizes and the emergence of language, has led to a biologically supported need for communication that has become untethered from the spatial and temporal constraints that once limited it. This idea finds support in the work of evolutionary psychologist Robin Dunbar, who, in his influential book, Grooming, Gossip, and the Evolution of Language, proposes that language evolved as a means of maintaining social bonds in increasingly large and complex human groups. As Dunbar argues, language evolved to allow us to gossip. Gossip, in turn, is what allows us to maintain the large social networks that characterize our species. But if language emerged as a tool for social bonding and information exchange, what explains the explosive growth of human communication in the modern era? The authors of Runaway Processes in Modern Human Culture suggest that the advent of digital technologies, particularly the internet and mobile devices, has removed the final barriers to the runaway expansion of human communication. As they write, the invention of the internet, and especially the widespread use of internet-connected mobile communication devices, have brought about a more or less instantaneous permanent connection between people, which, in turn, has resulted in an exaggerated communication activity and an increase in the so-called digital obesity in humans. This idea of digital obesity, term coined by technology expert and author Andrew Keane, refers to the overabundance of information and communication in the modern world, and the negative consequences it can have for our mental health, social relationships, and cognitive capacities. As Keane argues in his book, Digital Vertigo, we are living in an age of digital narcissism, where we are so busy self-broadcasting that we are forgetting to listen, to connect, to be truly present with each other. The concept of digital obesity is supported by a growing body of research on the psychological and social impacts of excessive technology use. For example, a study by Abramson et al. 2009, found that mobile phone use was associated with changes in cognitive function in young adolescents, while a review by Cass and Griffiths, 2011, highlighted the potential for social networking sites to lead to addiction and other negative outcomes. But the runaway expansion of human communication is not just a matter of individual psychology, it also has profound implications for the structure and dynamics of our social networks. As Dunbar, 2012, argues, there are cognitive constraints on the size of social networks that individuals can maintain, with a typical upper limit of around 150 stable relationships. The rise of digital communication technologies, 
however, has allowed us to vastly expand our social networks, at least in terms of sheer numbers of connections. This has led to what sociologist Barry Wellman calls, networked individualism, a social structure in which individuals are increasingly connected to large, loosely bounded networks rather than tight-knit local communities. As Wellman et al. 2001, argue, the internet and other new communication technologies are facilitating a change from densely knit and tightly bounded groups to sparsely knit and loosely bounded networks. While this shift towards networked individualism has undoubtedly brought many benefits, such as increased access to information, resources, and social support, it has also raised concerns about the quality and depth of our social relationships. As Sherry Turkle, professor of the Social Studies of Science and Technology at MIT, argues in her book, Alone Together, we expect more from technology and less from each other. We create technology to provide the illusion of companionship without the demands of friendship. The runaway expansion of human communication, then, can be seen as a double-edged sword, offering both opportunities for connection and risks of alienation and superficiality. As we navigate this brave new world of hyperconnectivity, it is crucial that we develop a critical understanding of the evolutionary and psychological forces that shape our communicative behaviors, and strive to cultivate meaningful, authentic relationships that nurture our social and emotional well-being. So, my dear Clockwork Eye viewers, I invite you to reflect on your own experiences with the runaway processes of modern communication. How has the explosion of digital technologies impacted your social relationships and sense of self? What strategies do you use to manage the demands of constant connectivity and maintain a healthy balance between online and offline interaction? Share your thoughts and insights in the comments below, and let us learn from each other as we navigate this ever-evolving landscape of human communication. And as always, if you have taken found some value in this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the Clockwork Eye for more mind-expanding content that will challenge your assumptions, broaden your horizons, and help you cultivate a deeper understanding of the complex interplay between biology, culture, and technology that shapes our lives. Remember, as Marshall McLuhan, the visionary philosopher of communication theory, once said, we shape our tools and thereafter our tools shape us. By engaging in critical reflection and conscious choice about the ways we communicate and connect, we can harness the power of runaway processes for positive change and build a future in which technology serves to enhance, rather than diminish, our shared humanity. Until next time, my fellow explorers of the digital frontier, keep questioning, keep connecting, and keep striving for a world in which the marvels of modern communication bring us closer together, even as they allow us to express our individuality and diversity. This is your friend Frank at the Clockwork Eye, signing off. Cheerio.